Hello, this is Jason T. Ingram, and this is my wife, Kiska. Say hi, everybody. Okay, anyways, she's about as excited to be on camera and being picked up as most felines are. But she's a big part of my life, and it's great to have a companion. And anyways, this is my vlog. This is actually the um, second issue, and it's only been one day, but... Lots been going on, so I wanted to check in again. <laughs> Never given a cat tail massage quite like this before. <laughs> it was just a, a very eventful day today in the in the progression of this uh, this new business and uh, launching some new things in my life. So I've been trying to document, <laughs> been trying to document as much as I can. And I, I was able to document a meeting today, which was great. we got to have some approval and talent releases for it. Uh, but it was great, though. I was able to go to the uh, the mental health nonprofit and uh, pitch some ideas about fundraisers. Because, as you know, uh, fundraising and nonprofits get really fucking competitive around Christmas. And the ones that, that don't put all this money into mailing out all this stuff, they're usually the ones that get forgotten about. So I love these people, and I, I would love to do art and music events and things like that. And I pitched an idea, I don't think it went over very well, but basically what I'm saying is that um, when it comes to uh, violent crime and gun violence, there's always, always a mental health component unless it's an accident or maybe something else going on. I mean, even if it's religious fanaticism, that's still, that has to do with the brain and programming and things like that. So basically, when people support mental health nonprofits, they're undermining the same thing that is uh, causing a lot of violent crime, gun violence, and things like that. So um, uh, it's it's cool though. It's like we're working towards the same cause, just with a totally different thing. Oh, Kiska, I was gone for a long time today, and she gets really cranky <laughs> if I'm gone more than six hours. She just runs from room to room and cries and screams. It's so cute. <laughs> Another thing I did today was I started my business class, and it was awesome. There were 30 people just like me, you know, that, that have a talent and a gift and an idea, and they want to take it to the next level, and they want to make a career out of it, and it was just such awesome energy. So I'm just, like, totally bathing in this entrepreneurial type glow that I was in. It was just awesome. And then I got to see my mom and she's really been, I hate to say it, but she's really been like the only person that's really supported me consistently all these years. I don't know what I would do without her. But then again, I don't know where uh, an elderly mom would be about, you know, be without her gay boy. <laughs> These moms love their gay kids. <laughs> Let's face it. They love us, but I don't like going shopping. I'm sorry. But anyways, um, as far as that, um, I got some ideas for um, some more projects. So I just write them down and put them on the shelf. So one of my things I want to do is to be able to organize those ideas, prioritize them. And now I got people to bounce things off of it. It's just wonderful. It's um, what's, what's hard is that I, I, well, I won't go through a lot of those things. It's just that, yes, I have been very symptomatic and... I embrace it now. It sounds corny, but every time I launch out and I do something big, I think I'm indestructible, and I don't take into account the fact that I have been sick for 25 years of my life, physically, mentally, emotionally, and then traumatized, and now the fact that I have some physical strength in me, now I've, I still have this magical thinking, and it's part of bipolar. It's very common with guys like me to just stop taking my medications and stuff like that. So, this is what happened when I uh, uh, went out today. Because I haven't left my house hardly at all in the last month. Um, in fact, I've stayed home in the last three months more than I have in, in quite a long time. So uh, it's good to get out. And uh, I have this uh, nervous habit. It's kind of an OCD thing, but that's never been my diagnosis. It's just that, you know, a lot of us have these traits. And... Uh, I always check the door before I drive out of my driveway and I lock it and I get in my car and then I go back and I check the door. Well, the thing is, is that the door is only like four feet away, five feet away from my door. So it's not 
like if I have an obsessive compulsive disorder, it's not like I'm driving back home and doing it. And I know that if I don't do that there, then I might have this thought that goes on and on in my head saying, I have to drive all the way back home to the next town, check my door and then go back. That's why I installed a security camera. So I don't get as nervous with that. So anyways, I get in my van and I'm thinking, Oh, um, I didn't check the door. I, I know I locked it, but I just want to check it anyways, too. And then I thought, no, I'm indestructible now. I'm Mr. Businessman. I'm just like this. And I'm like, fuck that. It's like um, New Year's, I felt like it's okay for me to live with these illnesses. And it's really hard. There's a lot of folks I know that, that live with mental illnesses, and uh, it's really hard to come to terms with it. And But... Uh, some of us who really, really deal with some heavy, heavy issues that, that make us unemployable and suffer a lot of social rejection and things like that, it's really, really hard to come to terms with this stuff, too. It's probably about as hard as coming to terms with being gay and having a Santa fetish. I mean, that's about the, 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 the one of the weirdest combinations, too. It's like, you know, most gays I know do not have. No, there, there's, quite a, there's quite a lot of us that like big old guys. But still, it was just like, oh, my God, do I have to, like, keep all these things a secret in my whole life? And why not? Because my life is funny. And there's nothing wrong with any of this stuff. So why keep it a secret? And I guess now that my life is kind of like art now, because I'm trying to do these kind of long-term projects, like mostly through social media, like I'm claiming that through prayer and discipline and going through these programs that that I miraculously changed into Mike Pence himself. I look just like Mike Pence. It's amazing. It's 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 a miracle, and I'm I'm testifying about it. So I that's my profile picture on Facebook for a while, and it's it's Mike Pence looking very nice, you know, uh, not an evil picture of him or something, you know. So I like doing that stuff because it makes people think, although it just usually makes people mad. <laughs> But that's okay, because I'm starting to realize more about how much I would like to create. I like to create new ideas. I love to be unconventional. I hate when people have the freedom to do whatever they want, and they do something conventional. And I'm not talking about them trying to make a living out of it. They're just like, oh, I could do whatever I want as a hobby. I'm just going to do this thing that everybody else does. And another thing is I also like to destroy, because if something needs to die in order to be reborn, then we have to just let it die and stop trying to, you know. So anyways, I feel that the institution of rock and roll, and I've noticed this too with the uh, School of Rock, which is interesting, and rock and roll came out of this rebellion against your parents. And now we're teaching this to our children. So it's like, yeah, this is a dead institution. It doesn't represent hardly anything that it began with. The message of rock and roll is basically saying, this is a genre like classical that you can teach your children. And it's totally harmless. I think that's what it is. So I would like to kill rock and roll. And I think having a band <laughs> that plays everything... A lot quieter than rock and roll. A lot slower than rock and roll. We don't even say anything. So having this uh, post-rock progressive rock band dialectic flowers is, is one of my ways of saying I am killing rock and roll. I'm putting out of its misery. And then let's get these younger generations now that want to do something fresh and rebellious. And then they can find that. I can't find that for them. They're going to have to create something in their weird little gizmo millennial brain of theirs that I don't know how it works, but they're going to find something and it's going to be really fucking cool. But, you know, my generation and older, you know, we just need to let this thing called rock and roll die. And I want to help kill it. And I don't know why, but I think it sounds really interesting. It, either that or it's just a publicity stunt. But anyways, that's what's been on my mind today. Thanks!